the new mission is actually going to what appears to be more recent lava planes, you know, one to two billion years old, whereas all the previous ones have been three and a half billion years plus. Liftoff for the most powerful Chinese rocket in operation, the Long March 5. Named after the Chinese goddess of the moon, the Chang'e 5 mission roars towards its target, the lunar surface. Chang'e 5 is an incredibly daring mission from a technical point of view, and as a space explorer, I'm completely old. Professor Andrew Coates has been involved in multiple space missions and he currently leads the PANCAM team for the ExoMars Rosalind Franklin rover which will be launched to Mars in 2022. But he's enthusiastic about any mission that gathers more information on our solar system. The Moon does hold some interesting scientific secrets. It's been something which has been sat there for a long time without an atmosphere and it provides that really interesting way of dating the rest of the solar system. Chang'e 5 is the People's Republic of China's first ever sample return mission, and if successful, it will be the third country to do so. The Soviet Lunar 24 mission completed the last in 1976. We've already got some data from lunar rock gathering, the US and the Soviets in the 70s. What more are we going to learn from these samples that the Chinese are, are collecting? All of those previous missions went to relatively equatorial places. The age of those was relatively old, you know, about 3.5 to 3.8 billion years old. So the new mission is actually going to what appears to be more recent lava planes, you know, one to two billion years old, whereas all the previous ones have been three and a half billion years plus. It will be interesting because we had thought that the moon was basically, you know, inactive since about three and a half billion years ago. It was 1609 when Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei first observed the Moon via a telescope and discovered it has mountains and other features just like Earth. Since then, our relationship to our celestial neighbour has only grown stronger. Back in the 60s and 70s, it was government-run programmes and Cold War rivalry which fueled the desire to claim a first in space exploration. When Apollo 11 touched down on July 20th, 1969, Commander Neil Armstrong became the first man on the moon. The following year, the Russians put the first tele-operated rover on the lunar surface, the USSR's Lunokhod 1. Lunokhod 2 followed in January 1973, and for a long time, the Russian Lunokhods remained the only tele-operated rovers to be sent to another planetary body, until NASA's Sojourner rover was deployed by Mars Pathfinder in 1997. While this was a game-changing moment, general interest in lunar exploration waned until the 21st century, when the baton was taken up by private companies and another key state player, China. In December 2013, the Chang'e 3 mission deployed its U-2 rover to the Mare Imbrium Basin, where it remained in operation for some 31 months. China followed this in December 2018 with the more challenging Chang'e 4 mission, which deployed its U-2-2 rover on the far side of the moon on the 3rd of January 2019. And now it's the turn of Chang'e 5 to dig into the lunar surface. But to even get there, Chang'e 5 had to complete many steps. In orbit, the spacecraft separated into two vehicles. An orbiter, retaining the Earth return capsule, stayed in lunar orbit, while the lander, equipped with an ascent vehicle, touched down on December 1st on the near side of the Moon. The landing site is a volcanic formation close to Mons Rumka, situated in the Oceanus Procellarum, the largest dark spot on the Moon, known as the Ocean of Storms, which researchers say may be a scar from a giant cosmic impact. There will also be another thing to help to actually date the surface. You look at the number of craters, the cratering density on the Moon, and compare that with other bodies in the solar system. So if you have 
a sample from somewhere where you know where it came from, so you have the context for the sample, that allows you to get a really good measure of more recent ages in the solar system, which we don't have at the moment. So actually, it will play a very important role, both for lunar science, but also for science of other bodies in the solar system as well. Neil Armstrong gathered lunar samples during the first moon landing. I get a little difficult to dig through the uh, initial crust. Very interesting. It's a very soft surface, but uh, here and there where I plug with the, uh, with the contingency sample. In total, the Apollo missions brought back a few hundred kilograms of lunar samples, and the Russians picked up around 300 grams on unmanned missions. The Chinese mission seeks to collect around two kilograms of samples by drilling to the depth of up to two metres and scooping up surface material. Well, drilling is very difficult. With a rover, you can sort of decide where to drill quite well, but with a lander, you won't have much choice. We'll just be getting a sample from the place uh, where the spacecraft lands. Nevertheless, that will be invaluable for science for bringing that back from the moon, from this relatively new area of volcanism. It's thought the area has a high concentration of Earth elements. Here on Earth, many eyes are watching with interest. Space exploration is a global endeavour by nature. Of course, uh, sometimes we cooperate, sometimes we compete, and this is what makes us all more resilient. And uh, even within Europe, we have different companies that vie for contracts, uh, but also work with each other under the aegis of the European Space Agency. Silvio Sandrone leads the new space exploration programs of Airbus Defence and Space. One of the challenges Chang'e 5 faced was, after sampling, the ascender had to make an automated lunar orbit rendezvous and transfer of materials to the service module. Docking in space is hard. It requires a lot of number crunching, how to align the two orbits. And this is hard. We have been the first to carry out an automatic docking in space with the automatic transfer vehicle, the ATV with the ISS, first time back in 2008, something that SpaceX achieved, I think, last year. Changi has to do it in lunar orbit, which is, again, farther away, not constant communication with the ground, so the machine, well, I suppose, will have to be extremely autonomous and intelligent to do that. And by the way, we fully sympathize with that because we are developing on behalf of the European Space Agency the two European elements of the International Mars Sample Return Mission, which will try to do something like Changi 5, but at Mars. And so you can imagine doing this kind of rendezvous and docking using spacecraft built by two different space powers, the United States and, and the EU, at that distance. The different space agencies and companies often collaborate. European scientists are expected to access these samples and work with Chinese teams on the subsequent research. And who knows, lessons learned on this mission may help Airbus design the European Large Logistic Lander, or EL3, for the European Space Agency that's expected to launch around 2027. You can do science of the moon, understanding its origin, its history, its composition, you can look up and explore the universe under perfect conditions. And of course, you can scout for resources and you can start creating the foundations for a future settlement. But the ability of bringing those 1.7 tons of stuff onto the lunar surface also makes you a fantastic partner for any other country or agency that is flying its own missions, you would dramatically extend the capability of that mission. The creeping up on the competition will be this little guy, Asagumo, built by Spacebit, which develops space robotics technology. Entrepreneur Pavlo Tenosuk is the CEO. What's your vision for space exploration for Spacebit? What do you want to achieve? In the past, um, space exploration was only open to large corporations or countries. But at the moment, even small startups can do something in space. So our company is one of the prominent examples. We were founded just under six years ago. Launched in 2021, Asagumo will be the UK's first rover to the moon. 
in the past all the rovers they were using wheels our rover is quite different because we're planning to use legs instead of wheels so that's a challenge on its own uh, because no one has ever tried to walk on other planets in a way so we have first rover to do so more robot the rover, Asagumo is currently undergoing tests for radiation, vibration and thermal balance. There are several motors in the legs, so Spacefit designed a heat transfer technology to keep them cool. The goal is to explore lava tubes that could offer natural shelters for astronauts. On Earth, lava tubes are often just a metre or two across. In the lower gravity of the Moon, they can be hundreds of metres wide and over a kilometre long. Chang'e 5's stay on the surface was brief, long enough to collect the samples before heading for home. However, the capabilities of future missions will change if China succeeds in establishing an international research station on the lunar surface. So looking further ahead, what are your thoughts on uh, plans to establish a, a permanent space station on the moon? Uh, well, there are some uh, plans in the West, you know, having the lunar gateway, so that will be in orbit somewhere near the moon and it will enable exploration of the moon, possibly sending further missions and sending landers, possibly even setting up a human base there, you know, so the possibility of having people there could enable larger experiments, for example astronomy on the far side of the moon, which sort of means that you cut off the interference associated with Earth. Well, the way it's going, I think that the first settlers would be machines, extremely capable and autonomous machines. Which means that humans, I think, will come later once the machines have prepared their terrain and have done a lot of stuff. So can you imagine what could a lunar settlement do for our philosophy, for our societal transformation? Because again, this new context, this new mix, and thanks to virtual reality and massive data communication, even being on Earth, we'll be able to experience that kind of lunar village. And this will transform our societies on Earth. And this is on top of anything scientific we will learn of all resources we will dig out of the moon. Earth eagerly awaits the newest precious cargo of the moon's surface secrets, due to land in Mongolia in mid-December. A new era of lunar exploration has begun. It's finished. But don't worry, we've got a lot more Razor stories for you. All you need to do is like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. We'll see you next time.